Welcome to my channel, this is Mario Lord, also known as Real Estate Guru PK. On this channel, we talk about my real estate endeavors. We also have the top real estate producers and the top entrepreneurs in the country. Be sure to click the link below with Justin P with his Support Black Colleges marketing course. Also with Jason White's Crack the Code affiliate link, click that below as well. Also to support the channel, Weeble and One Finance, Chase Discover Robinhood and Public a stock trading app. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Real Estate Guru PK signing up. Right, we got a special guest. Oh, my God, Jay Brand. What's going on, man? How you doing, man? Man, you know what? Love and life, man. I'm in, I'm in the presence of kings, bro. We we good today. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank Appreciate you. That. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of um, people you're real cool with, like Chris Senegal, TJ, uh, Donisha. Yeah. I want to I want to start off um, talking about that deal she talked about. Um, I think she got it for like two hundred dollars or something like that. You you brokered that deal with Don Donisha J. That's crazy. You know what's crazy though? Yeah. I just had a closing with her today. For real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I literally just had a closing with her today. I, um, I think our closing was like at one or something. No, it was like ten thirty, man. So I had one, me, uh, one of my agents um, went through and. Uh, yeah, she was. She actually brought that deal up at closing, Again? man. Because she got she got in another pinch. No diss to whoever she used. She had another broker on a deal, and she called me after she had had it on the market. The one we closed today, and she was like, "Jay, I need you." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What you doing?" She said, "I had an agent on this deal, and blah 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 blah." I said, "Isn't that the agent? The deal you told me about? We talked about two months ago." And I was on vacation and I answered my phone. Mm -hmm. And you took my vacation time mm. and you gave it to somebody else. <laughs> we answer your phone. I said I was on vacation. Mm -hmm. I talked to you. So so she ended up hitting me after she had a, a an agent on a deal, wasn't able to get it done. Uh, she listed it with us, man. We closed this one in like uh, we had a contract on it for like at two weeks. I think she had it listed with the other agent for a couple of months, whatever, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got it done. She's like, I know you always kind of come through. I said, look, I'm gonna start charging you extra when it, when I gotta come back and fix up. You know what yeah. I mean? So, but man, she DJ's good people, man. I I, I appreciate her uh, loyalty, man. And um, no, she had a deal, man. That was on uh, Varby Street, man. And um, yeah, in Third Ward, man. Mm -hmm. Like literally right around the corner from TSU. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she uh, she had that deal. And it was it was a dope deal, man. It just it was the market was real tight. Um, her contractors had kind of done some stuff, so she had to go back and redo. You know, we've all been there where mm -hmm. you pay somebody mm -hmm. good money to go do something, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you get ready for the inspection. It's like then they don't. It, hello, it, no, you know, voicemail at the voicemail. She so just had some other people had to come out and do it. And she had to mm -hmm. fix work, and so she got in on that deal kind of a little bit more um financially than she had planned mm. and then so we're able to get it done man it was crazy because it was right during harvey so what happened with harvey is you had like let's say there was ten thousand houses on the market mm. Mm -hmm. and then harvey happened and then all of a sudden you only had like 1500 houses on the market because wow. h-a-r said if it flooded take it off because mm. mm -hmm. we'd never had a storm of that size That's to where it's like well what do we do Mm -hmm. You know, and our forms weren't really bit, built for that with a lot of advanced notice as far as flooding and the history mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, yeah, it was a really good deal, man. But it, it really was one of those things that Harvey actually helped that situation because mm -hmm. she was one of the few houses that didn't, didn't get flooded. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, those houses, she's like, Jay, we should sell it. I was like, no, 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 no. We got the market now. Oh. You know, it went from being a buyer's market to a seller's market overnight. Like that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what she was saying. She's like, the fact that, you know, with real estate, man, you have to know the market. Yeah. Right. And you got to know exactly where you are. It's like with, with trading anything, man. And so when that market changes, it's all about supply and demand. And so you have to know which part of the supply you're on. And if there's plenty of supply and low demand, you're going to have to go ahead and let it go for a little, you know, mm. you might have to do a little something change for a little piece of change. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, but the market changed on it, man. And it was just recognizing the market in that moment mm -hmm. and really taking advantage of it, man. So she ended up doing pretty well on that deal at the end of the day. So you, you've been around Houston through every hurricane, every crisis, pretty much. Man, you sound like I, you may sound like I came with Jesus came, man. Like, you know, <laughs> man, you sound like, you, like I mean, I've like been real doing, old. I've been doing it right. Like I'm man. old, old. Like, like I had to get special assistance <laughs> to get this there. So I'm old. You know what I mean? No, but uh, man, I've been doing real estate for 23 years, Correct. bro. So mm -hmm. I say this is my Michael Jordan year, man. So we're gonna do mm -hmm. some great things. Um, but it has allowed me to see some cycles. I've seen when we had a uh, tropical storm, Allison. I just got in the business right there. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing. I-10 on the news 
and all you saw was the top of 18 yeah. wheelers 2001 right yeah yeah, yeah exactly. i yeah. got the game right in 2000. okay yeah okay. like 99 <laughs> so i was like yo but mm -hmm. also knowing what the memory is for buyers when it comes to floods mm -hmm. that's also helped right so if we see allison like with allison our market took about 18 months to recover to what mm -hmm. it normally does and then so having the knowledge of that having the knowledge of what happened during rita what happened happened not during harvey allows us to say okay well hey we probably got about 12 to 18 months with the buyer's mindset mm -hmm. where the first question they're going to ask is did it flood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now nobody's asking did it flood mm -hmm. it's partly during the process that they'll ask but it's mm -hmm. not the first thing that they ask about stuff. Okay. How was the recession like in, in 08? <sighs> True story. I have AT&T to this day, man. Okay. For this one reason. It dried up. Like, I'm mm -hmm. talking about, I picked my phone up and I'm like, hey, mom, I just wanted to do a test call because my phone <laughs> had to rain all day. <laughs> like, real estate hit, like, done. So, mm. we're going to be fully transparent, man. We're going to keep it 100 <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking about I had, you know, I was married, mm. kid, I'm taking care of everything. My monthly nut was like eight grand a month eight back grand, then. Back, back then. Too much a note for your, your house? house? Everything. Oh, oh everything man. included. Oh, all we go out to eat, you know, all oh, that stuff. Okay. Back Ooh. in the day, we was hitting up Expense. cheddar, hitting, mm -hmm. hitting the biscuits. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah cheddar, yeah, that's fine. So my monthly <laughs> nut, like what had to get paid every month was eight grand a month. Eight grand. Mm. Phone get cut my cell phone, right? Because I'm like, all right, we got a closing coming up. Everything's mm -hmm. getting pushed back. Rates are changing all that stuff. Call AT&T. They was like, hey, so when can you pay your bill? I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like, okay, Mr. Bradley, you've been with us since, you know, since I first got in real estate. They was like, we'll go ahead and turn your phone back on. Try that with Sprint. Try that was not happening. Sprint. Sprint. Yeah, Sprint. it's not happening. Sprint will cut you off over, like, if you paid $20.35 and it was $20.55, yeah, you, you get off. cut off. <laughs> so, man, loyalty is everything. That's why mm -hmm. I, I know I pay more for my cell phone bill. But, you know, look, when when, when stuff gets hard, man, mm -hmm. you got to realize who's got your back. And I say that when it comes to clients. I say that when it comes to title companies. There's always something mm -hmm. new. There's always something new on the scene. But hard times always come. Mm -hmm. How do you roll through it? Where your loyalties lie. You mm -hmm. know? So shout out to AT and T. Give me, give me a check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got, you got any questions? No, nah, man. I'm, 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 I'm gonna piggyback. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, when we was at the event, they was asking you about the uh, the bachelor thing. The whole. Uh, oh, ready to love. <laughs> You're ready to love. Yeah. How, how did that go? Man, you know what? It was a vibe. Um, I learned a lot about myself, bro. Like, so, you know, we've all been on dates before. Mm -hmm. you've, 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 you've had a girlfriend before. Just imagine a situation, man, to where you like this girl, you like that girl, and you like this girl. And then you got your homeboys, too. Mm -hmm. And then those girls like your homeboys, too. Yeah. So you got to date her while she in the room, and you bring her back from the date, and then you leave with her friend on the same date, on a different date. Meanwhile, when you drop her off, she going with your homeboy on a date, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And then so now, and it's so you got ten females, ten guys, and um, it it was man, I learned a lot. You got to be able to, you got to be able to, you know, Emotional. call an Omaha mm -hmm. under pressure. I <laughs> call that <laughs> audible. <laughs> you know I, mean? yeah, I call that audible. <laughs> you got you yeah. to Omaha some things. So, man, it was cool, man. Um, Nephew Tommy's my guy. He's also a client, man. And I just appreciate the, appreciate the opportunity, man. I, I learned a lot about myself, mm -hmm. personal uh, development, because at the end of the day, man, if you don't know who you are in those situations mm -hmm. and there's a lot coming at you and the producers want, you know, this out of you and then you got to stand. And there's a lot of times I told them, no, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing There was a dude that had a baby on the way when we got to reunion. And they were like, hey, we need to go get you to ask about him about his baby live on i'm not doing that uh, that's another grown man bro. Mm -hmm. like i'm not i wouldn't do that in real life yeah if yeah. i if i know you know let's say someone so has something going on in their personal life i'm not going to call you out in front of that you a grown man you got to deal with that on your own time mm -hmm. you know but there was some people that was like okay i'll ask him nah that's from the south side, bro. That's not how we do. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a vibe, man. And uh, you know, we all became family, man. Mm -hmm. This weird, everybody's almost dated each other type family to where it's like I see a lot of them out, and 
or we'll be at an event, man, and it's always love. Mm -hmm. so, but y'all still cool to this day? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, naturally, if we all went to high school together, there's some of us that are going to vibe more than others do. Mm -hmm. That's just naturally when you put people in a room as far as commonality. If, if, if mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if somebody else is, you know, doesn't have kids, then I'm probably going to gravitate to the guy that also understands fatherhood, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a dad, man, and that's an important role for me. So. Other than that type of stuff, but there's not really any beef, man. It's like mm -hmm. you know, everybody's cool. If we see each other out, it's all vibes, man. I usually ask my guests like, how like their upbringing, how they came up, and like, um, how did they like get into real estate? So, mm -hmm. um, man, that's a great question, bro. I'm gonna do a short but long story. You know, when somebody <laughs> right. tell you that, you go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> just go <laughs> tell the long story, yeah, man. Yeah, you go ahead. Man, my dad, bro. My parents. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up on in Mo City. Um, and so my mom, I was kind of like a rich dad, poor dad type of story, man. So where my mm -hmm. mom was um, a hairstylist and entrepreneur and she had her, you know, high school um, education and then really kind of focused on her trade stuff. My dad went to PV, got kicked out of PV, went to the army, went back to PV, finished up his degree. And then when I was a kid, got his TCU, uh, MBA from TCU. Mm -hmm. So he was corporate America. He was in real estate um, for an oil company. And so I got a chance to see her grind and like, man, my mom's like the original girl boss, man. Like straight up just about her business. You see her networking and really doing her thing. But she had, from from a collegiate perspective, no college experience, right? But my dad went back and got an MBA from TCU. Mm. One of the only African-Americans, I think the only African-American in his class at that time. So I got a chance to see both of them and then mm -hmm. my dad's going to work, she's going to work. She's controlling her hours. My dad has to do what you know the oil company says he has to do but he loves what he's doing. That's where I love negotiation, man. He taught me how to negotiate and I saw him doing that. So I just really got a chance to see both of those worlds. And then when I became an entrepreneur, I combined the two. So my business acumen, you know, that's my dad. If you get me to negotiate a deal, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, I'm in my box. And then from a perspective of, you know, with people and networking and the grind part, you know, that's my mom all day, man. So yeah, mm -hmm. I had this cool environment. I mean, God knows what he's doing, bro. Yeah. Um, what, what jobs did you have before you was in real estate? Man, I didn't work at UPS, man, but I, I was I was in the <laughs> restaurant game. Um, I was in, in uh, I was a waiter, you know, in college, and then I got a job at what used to be uh, before it was Verizon, it was GE Wireless, right? And so it's crazy how God will use your experiences mm -hmm. to you know benefit you later down the road, and you just never know. Kind of what we're talking about It's about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> So I used to, mon I was at a call center mm -hmm. and I was a dude that would call and try to sell you extra services, you know, for your cell phone, <laughs> yeah. whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so I would do that and I learned sales that way. Mm -hmm. And then I got, I was the top salesperson, then I got promoted and they gave me a sales team. Mm -hmm. And then so they gave me the worst sales team, right? Because when you, you, you young buck, you're not getting the best sales yeah. team. You, know? <laughs> you always going to get the worst. <laughs> almost is about to get yeah. fired <laughs> yeah. and it's your job to give them a job. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I went through and, you know, and I took that sales team to be mm -hmm. the best sales team in the company. And a lot mm -hmm. of my job was listening to calls mm -hmm. and figuring out where they missed sales opportunities, understanding voice inflection, understanding when the customer gave a response and they paused this way, what did that really mean, right? Mm -hmm. And then so I had no idea that God's really preparing me to be a real estate broker mm -hmm. and manage a real estate team. Mm -hmm. and understand sales and objections and all that type of stuff and how to negotiate deals because that's all we really do when we're negotiating mm -hmm. is you're listening to what the person's wants and needs are and really trying to help them find a way to get to it so that was really like my biggest like man you look back on stuff and you're like man you mm -hmm. really had me go through that to yeah. understand this right so mm -hmm. you get me on the phone i'm listening to everything all your pauses all the mm -hmm. you use this word in this sentence but when you had the opportunity you didn't use it in this one mm -hmm. so that means that one of those sentences you weren't being authentic mm -hmm. i know you're being authentic in this sentence so when you told me that it's not about the money it really is about, about the money, the money. <laughs> right mm -hmm. but sitting down listen to a dvr for hours on end mm -hmm. in college taught me that real estate mm -hmm. never did you know so it's, it's it's all the stuff that you go through and you really get a chance to experience mm -hmm. you're like oh, okay yeah i see why you I see why you had me go through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then got in the real estate business um, after I owned a restaurant. Before that, I was in in tech, um, and uh, I went to school for computer mm -hmm. information systems. 
So it's a whole, you know, it's the journey. Of, mm -hmm. You say you own a restaurant. What was the name of the restaurant? Man, so it was a spot out of Haiti, man. <laughs> okay. We shut it down. It, it didn't. It didn't really go that great. We did a five year lease, man. Right, okay. But I learned a lot about mm -hmm. really. Um, um, that's what made me appreciate real estate, man. Mm -hmm. When you got a restaurant, you have to open the doors. You have mm -hmm. to have staff. You have to have payroll. You have to pay your lease. Otherwise, you can't serve food. Mm -hmm. You've got all your uh, food and, and the costs that are associated with food. You've got mm -hmm. insurance that you have to have because you have mm -hmm. people walking in the doors. you got utility bills, light bills, $1,500. Man, I'm just hitting no more bills right now Nothing before, before you even make money. <laughs> before you serve a single plate of food. It's all man. Right? Dude. With real estate, you've done wholesale deals. Mm -hmm. you make 20 bands on something. All you got to do is have your cell phone. Mm -hmm. You might not even have to get in the car. Mm -hmm. Same yeah. laptop, you know, mm -hmm. that you, you know, we're looking at YouTube videos on mm -hmm. is the same laptop that you wrote a contract on. Mm -hmm. So what are your costs? I was like, man, real estate sounds dope. Dope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was there anybody in particular that put you on real estate or, or said, like, hey, get into real estate? Man, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. And that book changed the game for me because you had – all these people, it was similar to my life, right? Like mm -hmm. my mom, my dad, um, and what they brought to the table. Also, my dad, him being in real estate, um, he would develop lots for Chevron. Mm -hmm. And so um, he would go buy the land, so we'd have to go talk to the city mm -hmm. and see exactly you know, where the planning was going, what freeway was coming in in five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it taught me to think long-term, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times I was sitting down with um, some guys, uh, last year and we're talking and we're in a business meeting and they said jay um what's your 100 year plan 100 years <laughs> 100 year plan 100 that's how they play in cities said, right five years, five years. <laughs> he said 100 years five years but what's what's your 100 year plan how old were you when they asked you that um i was 43 43 okay yeah <laughs> i still don't have an answer man yeah i've got a i've got a good 20 year though mm -hmm. you know so i'm just gonna a decade, a decade a year mm -hmm. added on, man, and but we really aren't taught to think that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like if I ask you right now, you're like, man, I'm trying to make it to, you know, 2025, mm -hmm. and we're gonna figure out some things, and you know, so it just taught me that certain communities are are raised and brought up um, to think long term, mm -hmm. and when you think about a hundred years, it makes today seem real small. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if today seems real small, what can you do today to add to that 100 year plan? So maybe mm -hmm. going out and partying, maybe, you know, man, I was going to go get the new Gucci shoes. Mm -hmm. or maybe that's not as important as it was when I was just thinking about a two year plan. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. really like I've got some great mentors. My father being my number mm -hmm. one man, just seeing him do it every day, his passion for it. He loves people. Mm -hmm. um, he really just kind of showed me like what real manhood is. It's not about chasing girls and how many you know this you can do and how many cars you can acquire and this mm -hmm. and that how are you showing up for people man you know when mm -hmm. when when that when that when when the casket time mm -hmm. yeah what's going to be on epitaph mm -hmm. right what's really real like is mm -hmm. it nobody writes how many cars they had man i had two ferraris and a bugatti no i've never seen that on the epitaph mm -hmm. yeah but i've had, i've seen here lies a good man mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. best father ever that type of stuff mm -hmm. yeah so yeah yeah um, I normally ask all our all our guests this: um, Would you be mad if your kids wanted to, didn't want to be entre entrepreneur, wanted like a nine to five? Not at all, man. Like I teach my kids. Like my daughter, she's sixteen. So when she gets grades, she's a mm -hmm. straight A student. I ask her the same thing every time: Did you do your best? She said, "Daddy, I got straight A's." I said, "That's that's their judgment of you. Mm -hmm. What's your assessment of how you did? Mm -hmm. Did you leave some on the table?" And it's cool. Let's talk about it, right? Because just because somebody says 100 is the max, you could have got a 120 if you bad like that, yeah. right? Yeah. So when I teach them to think outside of, here's what society says you mm -hmm. did, and I teach them to think of, did you do your best? Then I think it opens up the world. So if she wants to, my daughter wants to be a psychologist, cool. But she can, tell you, she can do a real estate deal for you right now. She can put property on the MLS. Mm -hmm. You know, she see me rehab properties. I used to have her involved in my rehabs. She go in and pick out where the can lights are going out and tell me why and really get that analytical mind going so that way she can access a deal. I'm building some stuff for her right now that'll be her college fund stuff. Um, so while she's in college, she'll be managing properties. Mm -hmm. I had a property management company. So she'll be getting rental income while she's in college. Don't ask me for nothing. 
Racial? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> racial, racial. <laughs> you know, but that's like, like if you think about it from the, the our kids, like, it's funny, man. The other day I was at a property and I was opening the house, uh, mm. like a luxury property that we have. And I was, my kids were with me. My son's seven. So my son is like, daddy, how'd you get in the house? I'm like, you know, daddy sells houses, right? He's like, for real? My daughter looks at him like, <laughs> um, oh, you wasn't, she was my get it out the mud kid, right? Mm. So she was like, oh, I used to be sitting in the car while daddy's doing an open house for three hours and he would come out and check on me, whatever case is right. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't have to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. My son, he's just like, we got cool stuff now. Yeah. We can go sit here. We can sit mm -hmm. front row here and all that stuff. But my daughter, she, mm -hmm. you know, that was my, look, got my divorce, mm -hmm. gave my ex-wife the house. Went to stay with my parents. Mm -hmm. Now my eight thousand dollar nut is gone though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I go stay with my parents for six months. Mm -hmm. Then we get a one bedroom apartment. I'm literally sleeping on the couch. My daughter's sleeping in the bed. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. And then I talked to her about one of my guys, Clarence White. Shout out to Clarence, man. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, how can I be a great dad? He was like, yo, teach your kids how to how to process and think. Teach them how to make decisions. Mm -hmm. So every time we got a car, every time we made a major decision from a one bedroom to a two bedroom to a house to this and that. My daughter was a vital part of that. And so I'm asking her, what if we get a two bedroom? Well, daddy, I like it when you're on the couch, but yeah, wouldn't you like daddy to sleep on the bed though? <laughs> well, daddy's a boy and you're a girl. We're not going to do that. But daughter, okay, well maybe we'll get the two bedroom. Cool. All right. We, you know, we get a house. Well, why daddy? We, we had a two bedroom apartment. Well, but wouldn't you want to have a garage? Wouldn't you? Okay, cool. Then we go get the next house and the next house. Whatever mm -hmm. the case is. I taught her to buy a car, bro. She was three. No, sorry. She was six. We literally, I went to the car dealership, I bought the car. I said, man, I need you to, I'm gonna bring my daughter back. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I need her to pick out this car and I need her to sign the exact same paperwork that I did. Mm -hmm. So we get back to the dealership, I pick her up from school. Hey, you wanna go buy a car? Yeah, let's go buy a car. I got her to the, the right car that we we're gonna buy. And I said, okay, go tell the guy. Six, seven years old, walks up to him, I wanna buy this car. He's like, okay, Miss Bradley. Has her fill out all the same paperwork I fill out. Mm -hmm. She signs it, gives her the keys. To this, like, till like three years ago, she really thought that was her car. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it taught her to make decisions. Mm -hmm. So if she's got to make decisions as an adult, she's been making major level decisions for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. see, for me, I was one, two, many, da 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 da. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You ask her a question now, she's like, yeah, that's what I want. That's it. Mm -hmm. Decisive decision making because mm -hmm. she's practiced it. She don't got to think about it. She don't think about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still doing one, two, pick a few. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> say, any, many, money, mo. Yeah. What was your biggest um, real estate deal? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to hear this. <laughs> nah, look, when you when you got child support, man, you don't answer questions directly. You know? Okay, <laughs> no, my, but, yeah, my oh, man. He, he is correct about that. You do not answer questions look, man, correctly. I've done, I've done some sizable deals, man. We've mm -hmm. done some, um, some, some really nice, I like, so I started off doing, you know, first time home buyer. I've done apartments, um, and I did a transaction for forty thousand dollars. Man, literally the commission on it was, you know, enough for the car note. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but we've we've done some we've done some good deals. But I'm kind of I like I love the warm and fuzzy stuff. Mm -hmm. So we got a show that's about to come out um, next. I think it's going to be next week for Thanksgiving. I think, and the the it's about one of my clients who actually was married for 40 years, she lost her husband. Um, I had to help her sell that house. And then I had to be her uh, voice of reason as she's going to buy a house for the first time for herself. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the big numbers are cool, but that warm and fuzzy stuff, man, mm -hmm. like being there and she's like, Jay, thank you so much. And her, you know, having to trust me, not, I'm not the man of the house by any means. Right. But, the only other person she's made these decisions with is her husband mm -hmm. who's gone. And so that type of stuff is like, those are big money deals for me, even though the, the price pointed in there, you know, this, you know, I've done some eight figure deals, that type of stuff uh, on residential. But at the end of the day, like those are the ones that, that really, that I remember at the end of the day, trust me, the kids college fund and we eat good after the, the eight figure deals, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but those, you know, those are, those are ones that matter the most. Man. Um, would you want your like your daughter to go to like a um like a like a black college or does that matter to you man i see your shirt shout out to justin man that's family right there um you know i, I really want her to i just 
my job is to teach her how to make decisions, mm. um, to guide her, to, to shape, open her mind up and allow her to see different things and not <clears throat> tell her how to think about them. Mm-hmm. And then whatever choices she makes after that, since she's been making major level decisions for the last 15 years or, or however long, then for me is really to just let her do her thing. Mm. Um, so I could I have wants for her, but my biggest want for her is her to just do her. So that way, when she gets mm. thirty years old, forty years old, man, daddy had me do this. I ain't even like that. Because mm. we don't have to go work at the plant anymore. We don't have to go work here. You can create whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So one of my biggest things that I wanted to do coming up, man, is find something that I would do for free, and then find a way to get paid well for it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've done. And the minute that this isn't what I would do for free, I'll find something else that's gonna make me happy because my kids get a chance to see um, me live out my dreams. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if you know Derek McKinney, uh, he's got loud records, but yeah. that's literally what loud stands for, live out your dreams, mm-hmm. right? And so if I can teach them to live out their dreams, whatever they choose to do, man. Like my mom used to tell me back in the day, man, this is, she's from East Texas, so it's a little country. But I like, mom, what you want me to do? She was like, look, if you want to be the, the best ditch digger, then be the best ditch digger this side of Mississippi. <laughs> but be the best. Mm-hmm. So all I want to do is be the best me, bro. You know, I want my kids to be the, be, be the best them. Um, I can tell you the difference in between having a little boy and a little girl is they think totally different. Mm-hmm. Girls are way smarter than us, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's scary. Mm-hmm. Like, I was teaching my daughter to read, like, high-level books at three and four. You know, my son's like, Dad, can we play a game? <laughs> you know so they just you know they just think different but it's cool because you get a chance to see them develop mm. and relationships are different man so whatever they want to do in life uh, my job is to provide them the opportunity uh, my daughter of course is a young african-american woman so i've got friends that are judges downtown i've got friends that are doctors um i've got friends that are that own that are ceos of their own companies and multi-million dollar companies mm-hmm. i'll take them in take her in to sit with them mm. the world is your oyster if you mm-hmm. see this then it's real <clears throat> Right. We went to uh, shout out to Judge Maria Jackson, man. We went to her chambers. Um, She's a good friend and client. We walk in and my daughter has to see all these people stand up when this woman walks in the room that looks like her. Mm. Powerful. We go back to her chambers. She's got the Bible open. She's literally reading scripture between deciding people's fate. Mm. Right. Like that's real. Those are things that will be impactful. And so um, it's just really, you know, fatherhood is about showing your kids the possibilities and let them choose. Where you see yourself in five five years? Uh, you know what, man? Uh, hopefully more time on the beach. I ain't talking about Galveston, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to where I gotta learn a different language. Um, mm-hmm. We've got some stuff in place, man, to where I feel like I was talking to a good friend of mine, man, early part of my career. I felt, I remember like LeBron when he mm-hmm. was like 20 year old LeBron, he dunked on everybody. Mm-hmm. He was in the paint more than he was, you know, mm-hmm. at the free throw line or at the three point line. Kobe, same way, right? Mm-hmm. Dunking on everybody. And then you notice after they get in that career, that jumper is yeah. signature. Mm-hmm. Fadeaway is signature. Man, I'm on my fadeaway stage, bro. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to dunk on everybody. I don't need to do every deal. Mm-hmm. I'm at a point where um, I've worked hard and it's really the work smart. Cause you mm. realize your knees ain't gonna last you yeah. for your career <laughs> yeah. if you keep dunking on everybody, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so that's where I'm at, man. So mm-hmm. in five years, man, it's gonna be more beach time. Um, really just, you know, hopefully visiting my daughter, getting on her nerves while she's at college, probably doing <laughs> post-grad stuff, you know? Um, and, you know, probably at my son's football games, man. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you got yeah, this market, do, do you suggest buying in this market right now, being with the interest rates? Oh, I need to know this. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, it's a great answer, man. And you'll hear people say mm-hmm. this term, um, buy the house, mm-hmm. name the rate. Mm-hmm. And what they mean by that is real estate is, in my opinion, and I'm a little bit biased, mm-hmm. is one of the best assets out there, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's highly leverageable, mm-hmm. meaning that you can put 3.5% down. Mm-hmm. So let's say if we're buying a $300,000 house, I got to come out of pocket $10,000. Mm-hmm. Ten five, mm-hmm. but I have a three hundred thousand dollar asset. How much money does it take you to go buy three hundred thousand dollars worth of stock? Three hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> right? Three hundred dollars worth of crypt, three hundred thousand dollars worth of crypto. How much? Um, it depends. <laughs> three hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 
but you can take ten thousand mm. dollars and buy three hundred thousand dollars of real estate. Real estate, yeah. Right, and then I can go do that a fine, a infinite amount of times, depending on how much ten thousand dollars I have, mm -hmm. or the down payment goes up. So now it's twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Name a better asset class that's that leverageable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it doesn't matter what the rates are. Mm -hmm. Our house value is going to go up. Yes. So if we know that the asset is going to appreciate, mm -hmm. does it matter what the rate is? No. Nah. We're just used to low rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Right? When the barry the, the barrier for entry is that low, mm. buy. If I know that in five years the rent that's two thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. is gonna be three thousand dollars a month. If I know that in ten years that three thousand dollars is gonna be five thousand, mm -hmm. and I got a thirty year note and my payment's only three why why am I not buying? Mm. Yeah. See what you're saying. It's yeah. not as sexy at 7%. Mm -hmm. I put it on my Instagram today. The first time I've seen it a closing ever in 23 years was a 7.5% interest rate on a 30 year note. And was I this a my single ID. family house? Single family. Whoa. They got hit in the throat. We, yeah. we didn't have to buy it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. what's the house going to be worth next year? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be worth next you know, the problem is, is that we get caught up on things that the upper class don't get caught up on. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I know that my asset is going to appreciate, let's say 5% a year. Okay. So that means compound over three years, that's 15%. Mm -hmm. My rates, 6%. That's a nine point spread. Yeah. And then I get a, a mortgage credit on my taxes for the money that I paid in interest. They not even thinking about that. Mm -hmm. We just, 6%, you getting it back. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing your mm -hmm. taxes, you getting the, the, the extra money it costs you back, but your asset, you don't have to give up any, any of your investment. Mm -hmm. I think we look at the wrong thing sometimes, man. Mm -hmm. Like the sky is falling. Okay, cool, it is for you. I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. It's not falling over here. It's perspective, mm -hmm. right? When you look at, you know, my parents, when they bought a house, mm -hmm. rates was 13, 14%. Yeah, they were, yeah. 7%. Like my dad told me that. <laughs> yeah. We, we mm -hmm. can't fathom it because it didn't happen that in our was, generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this 23 years, bro. I've never seen a seven and a half interest rate, but I will buy a property tomorrow mm -hmm. in a minute at seven and a half percent. Mm -hmm. Because okay. you know, as an investor, mm -hmm. you study your market, mm -hmm. you know your asset class, Cool. Would I do that on a mobile home? Hell no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> duplex? Do you want a duplex? Yeah. Okay. I'm for my daughter. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell my wife we keep in the house. Then. We Man, keep look, it. We keep, keep in the house. I ain't getting rid of it. <laughs> um, because you probably have mm -hmm. an interest rate that's at 3% or 4%. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, it's better than 7 It's better than mm -hmm. what the people pay today at 7 mm -hmm. So keep that. Find a way to buy more. Mm -hmm. You know? And make it make sense. Get a duplex, mm -hmm. right? Get another duplex, rent out both sides, mm -hmm. right? If you got an extra $2,000 a month cash flow coming in, does it matter what your rate is? No. Mm -hmm. You could be 10% if you got 10. Doesn't matter, it could be 13. <laughs> you got still got 2,000 coming in. If I tell y'all right now, I can get y'all Tesla slot for $100, you buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause you know you're the value of the asset. Mm -hmm. Tesla's gonna sell more cars, they're gonna do more tech, they're going to mm -hmm. do way more stuff to where it doesn't matter what you're paying. You're buying the investment, mm -hmm. right? You believe in Elon Musk, whether you agree with him politically or not, or who he lets back on Twitter mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. Yeah. Right? Like, you know that product, mm -hmm. right? If I know a house is, first of all, it's insured. Mm -hmm. I've got insurance that pays if it burns up. If Elon Musk decides to do some crazy stuff and burn it all down, you have no insurance in Tesla stock. Zero. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it goes from 300 to 100 the next day, you just took a $200 loss per stock that you own. Mm -hmm. Your house, if it burns up tomorrow, what you gonna call? Stay farm? Yeah. Get all your money back? Stay farm, all state, yeah. Progressive. <laughs> mm. Where's the risk? Mm -hmm. I got an yeah. um, uh, either or question I ask all my guests. Go for it. Then we done. Um, <sighs> if
if it's Pac or Biggie, we got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we got a problem, man. Both. Let's say B O B O A F. Both. 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 Right. Um, flips or rentals? Both. Both. Oh, it's either or. My bad. <laughs> no, you can do. You can do both. You can do both. Yeah, you can do both. I'm gonna be consistent, man, mm -hmm. because I'm gonna say rentals, and mm -hmm. the reason why is because of what we just talked about. Okay. okay. Flips is being in the paint. Mm -hmm. Right. Just dunking on people. Just dunking on people. Just because <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Because you because you <laughs> six eight, two hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> yeah. And and you can dang your teddy rim down. Mm -hmm. But that jumper though. Mm. That's the Reynolds man. The Reynolds. Okay, that's, okay. I, feel yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, then that was a goal. Wholesaling or flips? <sighs> I'd probably say wholesaling, man. Get wholesaling. in and get out. That's Easy. old man game. Yeah, yeah, it's get in and get out. Like, it's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes there's ego involved in the flip. Mm. I can create this out of this and I can make it this. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, sometimes there's more profit, but not always. Mm -hmm. So I can take six months of my time, effort, energy, maybe three mm -hmm. months of my time, effort, energy, and put a flip together, deal with contractors and all that stuff. I might make 80000 mm -hmm. right? Or I can take, let's say, maybe five hours of my time mm -hmm. and make 20000 mm -hmm. When you look at how much you're spending, like, we have to look at our time as an asset mm -hmm. so that we don't get back. Stress, too. Yeah. Flips. Yeah. You're dealing with them contractors and buying material and all that. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the room ever had a problem with a contractor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly, man. You know? <laughs> you have you a problem know? right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It makes you want to go back old school. I might bust my head open today, man. But then you're like, you know what? God's been working on me. He's been working yeah. on me. I'm, uh, <laughs> you yeah. know? But I've, I've had some situations with contractors, man. You know, pay somebody money, all of a sudden they don't show up to the job. Oh, mm -hmm. God. You know? I feel that. If you had a dollar for every time, so that 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 uh that wholesale looked real sexy, though. Yeah. After that, it's it's yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, I actually enjoy the creative process of um, of doing um, flips. You know, we've got uh, great, great team and great people that we trust. Um, mm -hmm. I used to go through and design everything and all that stuff. And I realize I'm a lot better at negotiating a deal than I am planning a house. That's not my strength, right? That ain't how they say that. It's not my ministry. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a, a great architect that now will go through and look at our plans and see stuff that I don't see. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of the day, it's a better product. So what I've learned is that trust the team that we put together, mm -hmm. um, get the right people in the right places, and then let them do their job. Okay. Um, I've let go of the I need to have it. So, if you would have asked me that question two years ago, I'd have said, man, a rehab every day. I want it. It's, mm -hmm. But it's ego involved in that. Mm -hmm. I did this. Mm -hmm. Man, look, them kids don't care where that money came from. Mm -hmm. Daddy, daddy, daddy wrote a contract and then he sold that contract to somebody else and he made 20 grand off of it. That's a bad man. That's a bad <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, or daddy took four months and missed three soccer practices. Uh, yeah. And then show up for lunch at school because he was dealing with a contract that I didn't show up. Yeah. And he made sixty, but I didn't get my dad. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I yeah. think about time, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Y'all mm -hmm. still got all y'all hair, bro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you start making hairless decisions, man. This is different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel that. Um, mm. uh, rental property, or Airbnb. Shout out to all the dudes doing Airbnb, man. I haven't gotten a space, um, but when we're looking at time and money, you know. Airbnb, you have people that you can put in place. You got your managers, you got your cleaners, you got all these things. Um, you know, we all know TJ. I've got a lot of the guys that are doing a great job in that space. Um, I've got some agents that are actually, you know, have taken this course and and done their Airbnbs, and that's probably in the next space I'm getting into. Okay. Um, and it's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, when you look at, I, I do return analysis for my clients. I have a lot of investor clients. And so you might have a property that they're into for you know, on their monthly for 2400 they can, you know, rent it out on a 12 month lease for 3,000. You get 600 times 12, that's 7,200 for the year. Mm -hmm. um, if they Airbnb it at a, you know, $110 a night. Um, and let's say that's, you know, and they, they have, or even really on a property like that, you're probably closer to, you know, closer to $200 a night, right? Mm -hmm. $200 a night, let's say you have a 30% vacancy rate for the month. And then you're looking at, you got 20 days right mm -hmm. and all of a sudden man you four grand 
you've doubled your money. Mm -hmm. You still got twenty six hundred dollars, but now you're fourteen hundred dollars, and you still had the property vacant. That's at twenty. That's with only twenty days. Mm -hmm. You know, you mess around and get that joker to like twenty five days. Oh yeah, you're you sitting cash pretty. A whole extra thousand dollars just on five days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense financially mm -hmm. if you have your team in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you out here doing all the cleaning. <laughs> no. For booking yeah. and you managing, mm -hmm. you fix light bulbs and all that type of stuff, it might not make a sense, you know, mm -hmm. much sense, man. So, yeah, I'd say definitely the Airbnb. Airbnb? Yeah. Okay. Um, stocks of crypto. <sighs> I know it's not popping right now. I love crypto, man. Love crypto? I got in crypto early, man. I love crypto. Yeah. I've, I've made, when I look at what I've done in stocks, I think crypto the way it's behaved is more like the Airbnb <laughs> mm -hmm. and then the other is more like the long-term rental, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And it's so like a higher return. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But the risk is, yeah. you know, it's you get that property yeah. the whole month. It ain't fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you, if you get it booked 25 nights, you know, you might be on a trip somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. So I, I like crypto, man. And I think mm -hmm. right now is a really great time to buy crypto. Um, I follow a guy out of Dallas, man. He put a million dollars. Uh, I don't know if you ever follow him. I'll send him your information, man. He put a million dollars in a crypto account, and he tells you exactly how much he has of everything. He's got Shibu. He's got a bunch of different stuff. Shibu in him? Yeah, he's got that. Mm -hmm. Boy got $193,000 in his account today. He had a mill in there four months ago. So when I look at it, I'm like, mm. it's time for me to go ahead and invest in whatever he was invested in because it's down 80%. Mm -hmm. It's all market, man. It's going to do this, whether it's real estate, whether it's stocks, whether it's this and that. I think the return on crypto is high. But just like with any financial plan planner, when they sit down with you, the first thing that those guys ask me is, what's your risk tolerance? Mm -hmm. My risk mm -hmm. tolerance is high because mm -hmm. I've been doing real estate for 20-something years. I know I can mm -hmm. get $10,000 and buy $300,000. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'll throw 10 on it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, money or equity? <sighs> we going to make the basketball analogy on every one of these. Man. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to take equity, bro. It's equity. that 18-foot jumper, man. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, I don't need to dunk. I don't need to dunk. I'll, I'll tell people, I, I do deals right now where if I have my investors and I've got some guys that are doing some big, big developments um, mm -hmm. and I'm their broker on it, I was like, man, I'll, I'll slide my, my commission over in an equity. I'm not tripping. Oh, for real? I need to check. All right. We need equity, man. These kids got to eat long term. Mm -hmm. My kids don't understand what side of the menu they can order from, man. They, 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 oh, my, my daughter, I want to rib by daddy. I'm going to tell her no. Equity. Dang, I ain't never look at it like that. Just get the equity versus just cashing out. Man, when I think uh, if you really talk to some people that have put some major money down, mm -hmm. they've always made their mate, their best deals have been equity deals. Mm -hmm. Whether it's 50 with vitamin water, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. LeBron with some of the stuff that he's been doing, man. Mm -hmm. Beyonce, she had him pay him an equity. Uh, yeah, on 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 the on Coachella joint, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She could have made millions. I think it was like four million dollar check. Mm -hmm. She could have got for doing that. She's like, no, pay me when pay me an equity. Mm -hmm. And we need to learn that, man. A lot of other communities have been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. We're so quick to let me get some money real quick so I can go buy something. What am I do with a check right now? I'm investing in something, right? Mm -hmm. With an equity position, I don't have to pay taxes on it. So dumb. Right? Mm -hmm. You give me 100 grand, cool. I might have mm -hmm. 70 left after taxes. Yeah. Magic talks about that all the time. Do you like could, he offered them equity. Yeah. yeah. He went with uh, Chuck Taylor's. I mean, yeah, Chuck mm -hmm. Taylor's. Right. Yeah. And, and the money he made off of that? Absolutely, man. So I think, you know, educating ourselves to, like when people ask me whether they should you know, sell their property or not, mm -hmm. first question is, what are you going to do with the money? Mm. Now, like, well, I don't know yet. You can keep it. If you've got something, if you take $100,000 out of a property, if mm -hmm. you've been in a property more than two years, then you get your, your exempt from having to pay taxes on it, right? That's your homestead. Okay, cool. You take that $100,000 and you put it in a bank account, and the bank account is going to get you 0.9% interest, 0.5, mm -hmm. probably 0.1. The 100000 a year later is 102000 If you'd have mm -hmm. kept it in a property, last year we've been getting minimum 8% um, uh, um, uh, appreciation on properties, right? Mm -hmm. If you would have kept it in the property, it's 108000 mm -hmm. Did you win? Mm -hmm. You had something in your hands that made you feel like you got some money in the bank, mm -hmm. but you just lost $7,000. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's on a hundred. Now put it at two. Now you lost 15000 mm -hmm. And what'd you do with the money? To sit in the account? Nah. 
Inflation. Yeah. <laughs> you lost because inflation is beating you at that point, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think at the end of the day, man, we have to think about, you know, we use a term in real estate, highest and best use. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I have a lot, I can put, if I had a 5,000 square foot lot, I can put um, two houses on it. Mm -hmm. Cool. And two houses, probably build them. Let's say we build them for 300, we sell them for 360, we made $60,000 a house, that's $120,000. Cool. Did I don't do it. But what if we build a high rise, the same 5,000 square foot, mm -hmm. and it allows, the market allows for it. Mm -hmm. Now I've got 50 homes off of a 5,000 square foot lot. Mm -hmm. What's the highest and best use? The high rise. Mm -hmm. So if we start thinking of our money like that, is the equity better or is me getting the cash? What you gonna do mm -hmm. with the cash? You're not gonna do anything with the cash, keep it in the property. Or slide it over to something else and do a 1031 exchange, buy something big or better and invest that same mm -hmm. hundred thousand because once it hits your account, you get taxed on it. Yeah. If it's, if it's not a homestead deal. So appreciate it, man. I'm yeah. leaving right there.